Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Easy Norway. Today, we are joined by the duo from Denmark, Fyr og Flamme. Welcome! Thank you! All the way from Denmark. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> and let's start by asking, because we are neighbors here in Scandinavia. Yeah. How is life in Denmark now in this difficult situation and time? Are you guys okay? We, uh, in particular, are very okay, but uh, it's hard times down here and people are uh, feeling a little uh, sore. Uh, they really need to get out. It's it's springtime and we need to get out of our, our houses and start li- living our lives again. But it got a little better today because the hairdressers opened again yeah. and, 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 and the Ooh. tattoo is, and yeah, all, all the funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> So finally, we can get a haircut and uh, <laughs> start looking better again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, we want to get to know you better. Uh, can you tell us uh, who is Loritz and uh, Jesper? Yes, so um, we are Loritz and Jesper, and we are. Uh, very simple people from uh, from Denmark. We're not from the big cities. We're actually from very very small villages. Jesper used to live on an island, and uh, we we really like nostalgia and we really like uh, um, yeah what the outcast uh, and the, the the stories of the little man. So that's that's what we're into, kind of. Mm-hmm. And Jesper is normally a, an actor. Oh really. Hmm? And, and what kind I'm, of acting? Yeah, yeah, yeah acting. Uh, all sorts of... Uh, until a few weeks ago when we won the Middle Dinner Prix and maybe a couple of months before, I'm, I actually was more known as an actor in Denmark, uh, both from um, uh, uh, TV and, and in uh, theatre. And I met uh, Lauritz because my, uh, the acting school was uh, uh, right beside the uh, uh, music uh, university. Uh, so that's where we uh, met each other. And after you met, when and how did you decide to form a band? Because you're you're a pretty new band. You haven't. Is this your third song? Yeah, but yeah. we've actually been writing music together for almost four years now. Okay. And um, and uh, then it's uh, when you meet each other through the music. Uh, um, sometimes you need to learn. Uh, what the other guy likes and so on. And um, when we formed the band, uh, we didn't even have a name yet. And we tried just to make music actually very much inspired from the Eurovision and the Danish uh, Melodie Grand Prix in particular. Um, so actually, when we decided to uh, to uh, to entry uh, for this year's tournament, it, it wasn't that, uh, yeah, it was a big deal, of course, because it's a dream, but it, it, it was natural for us because we have always wanted to make that kind of music. Um, so so we did that for like three years and then we found our sound and uh, yeah, released our first song. And finally, it was your turn to participate in the Danish Melody Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just a few weeks ago, you won the Danish uh, Melody Grand Prix. And um, has it uh, always been a dream of yours? I think when I closed my eyes as a child, maybe it was, but I I had never uh, dared to speak it out loud. So uh, I and I don't think I ever dared to do it without Jesper. Uh, maybe even before I even met you. Um, I I found out after we've won that I have told more people that, than I actually remember that it uh, was an actually uh, a, an actual dream I, I, I had even maybe even before I met Laos. Oh. So because a lot of people uh, r- wrote me to, uh, to, to, to celebrate and they told me, oh, it's your dream. Your dream came yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And how, how was that experience? Because we know from Norway, it was very different MGP here this year with no audience and everything. But can you tell us about the experience in Denmark? How was it to be there for the final? Well, it would be easier to say if it was different if we have been in the competition before with an audience. 
yeah of course <laughs> so, so you, we knew all the time that it would be like that and we were also quite excited anyway because it's live television so many things can go wrong um mm. and i don't know maybe for me personally i'm used to the lights are out in a theater room for example so it's and not that different yes, but it's a, a movie yeah. actor so he's used to performing before a camera only with mm. no uh, 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 audience at all so for me uh, it was very natural because uh, uh, Jesper was so good and charismatic so i could just stand those three meters behind him and just smile because he did such, such a fabulous <laughs> job <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful to see your to see your performance and uh, as a Norwegian who followed Danish MGP every year I have to say I love your song this year because the mood that you bring on Thank stage you. with you and and the happiness that you bring to just it's such a feel good song and and you have to sing along at least for us who know and understand the lyrics it's it's a great song I have to say. I've actually heard that people who speak Norwegian or Swedish uh, are familiar with the Scandinavian languages, but they yeah. don't understand our song <laughs> at all. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Well, I do, and I love it, so... <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, well, your song, after you won, you reached the top of the charts in Denmark. And as far as I know, that hasn't happened since 2013. So yeah. what do you think of the response, both in Denmark, but also across Europe? Uh, so we, the response in Denmark is very, very overwhelming, but uh, how um, snobbish it may sound, it's not that surprising because we already earned our uh, place in the charts before we ent entered the, the melody country. So because okay. we, we, all, we um, released these two songs before and they got very popular. So um, uh, automatically releasing uh, the third song, which was uh, our uh, country song, uh, we knew that it was uh, going to, uh, yeah, it was a great uh, podium to, to put it on. So um, maybe if we didn't win, it would actually be there anyways, because uh, of all the, you know, um, and now it maybe gets a little technical, but uh, the algorithms and stuff like that, because we had uh, quite, uh, quite a few listeners. Uh, already so but but we're very very proud and humble yeah. that's wonderful and about europe i mean know there have been some mixed reactions like with the odds and 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 other polls you're not doing that great but still i see people who say i love this song it's such a feel-good song what's the response been from europe if, i must say i'm so surprised uh by the the the, the countries that uh have um earned us respect we got mm -hmm. a lot of messages from Spain. Who who would what? have known? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> a, a couple from uh, Greece, and you know, we, we made the song, and we are believing in them. This is a kind of Scandinavian tradition of making Eurovision, mm -hmm. but uh, other countries are actually feeling the vibe. They are recognizing the '80s in the song, and mm -hmm. uh, they get it. And, you know, if you're curious enough, uh, you will translate the text um, on Google. And people already did that. Yeah, Yeah, and then then uh, we're learning this um, on the go. So, um, for example, now we're re realizing that there's both, both the televote and uh, the juries in the countries. So yeah. we've heard quite a few people say that the televote, uh, we might actually surprise people, but that uh, the most of the juries probably wouldn't like our song that much i don't know what mm. i would put into that um also we're learning that uh Eurovision, uh is a european contest but it has viewers all over the world so we have Indeed. messages from the states and argentina philippines and, uh, uh, wow Korea, yeah, <laughs> as well. so that's pretty cool oh that's wonderful i'm so ha i'm so happy for you guys it's so much that's fun nice. that to see Scandinavian acts reach into the world because we need more Scandinavian music in the world, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. And uh, singing in Danish uh, makes it harder for people to understand your song. Uh, still, you, des uh, you decide to keep it in uh, Danish. Uh, why is that? Well, listen to our English. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, if it, <laughs> That's a funny answer. <laughs> <laughs> Quite fast, we we look each other in the eyes and we just like try a, a line or two, and it just it, it just doesn't work out. Um, if you're Danish, you would recognize uh, a few flames song on uh, Laurits' uh, text universe, mm. and um, and yet was uh, very uh, particular and uh, outspoken voice uh, and the way that uh, yeah. Um, uh, of him getting around with the words. So for us, so early in our ca career to start on singing in in English would be uh, a no go. But we have joked uh, about uh, you know some of our our great idols uh, translated their songs to uh, to German. Uh, so it would be funny to do that, but it it has mostly been a joke. Yeah. And you know, as an uh, established band that already existed before the competition, uh, you know, a breakthrough is the art of uh, being yourself all the time. There's so many things that can disturb that. And why should we make our songs in English if we don't feel it? We made like a typical Danish Eurovision song and we can change that. That's That's how we won. And we have to be ourselves all the way. I think we would get a worse uh, place in the competition if we uh, sang in English. I really do believe that. I, agree. I love that answer because so often, especially in Scandinavia, we seem afraid to send our own language to to show into the world. Because you see, Albania sings always in Albanian, and there's Azerbaijani and Russian songs and. I, I think the East of Europe is more proud of their language than we are. So I think it's really unique and extremely cool that you're deciding to sing in Danish. They're proud of the language, but it's, it, there's also this, uh, they really want to win, right? Um, all the Scandinavian uh, countries have uh, has won several times uh, just these last mm -hmm. 20 years. So uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they calculate in, in, in winning. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure on us as well when we uh, went out and said, no, we're definitely going to sing it in Danish. Um, but I think the problem is also uh, on the national stages, uh, besides the, um, the uh, country uh, and the Melody Festival, that a lot of uh, the best musicians are trying to break through to the big international market that they actually forget the, the national stage. Um, so a problem, I wouldn't say that because there comes a lot of good music out of Scandinavia, but it's so wonderful languages, in my opinion. But you know, there gotta be a difference in uh, songs that are designed for Eurovision, and our song is not like that. We be, because you know this, the sound of, of of that type of song, and that's that's not how we won the, the Danish competition. No. So, it's not designed for, like, oh, certain sound, certain kind of bass being a track that you could listen to in a nightclub uh, like 2021 20, that's not our song you remember 13 years ago when uh, every song sounded like spain because rick martin was hip yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly that year um, i think it's it's I think it's really cool i i, I want to tell you that cuz cuz as a scandinavian you know my heart goes out to fellow scandinavians so i'm i'm really glad that you stayed uh, with the danish language but Another thing that I heard uh, from an interview, I think, was that you were aiming to get 12 points or you were hoping to get 12 points from Malta this year, but you yeah. thought that it was more likely that you would get it from Norway. <laughs> but why <laughs> Malta? Why so specific? <laughs> we said that in an interview, uh, actually, before we uh, entered, but we were asked if we were ever going to enter and, uh, and then it's become uh, our catchphrase, 12 points from Malta. <laughs> because uh, uh, music um, breaks down borders, and they, uh, uh, I've been to Malta, they listen to completely other songs uh, down there than they uh, mm. do up here. So um, if we get 12 points from them, that, them then they'll know that we... Everything can happen. Yeah, and yeah. we kind of did something right, that it's a, some kind of universal language. And we choose a small uh, country, like ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay to be an underdog. It, it's more comfortable. Yeah, and yeah. it's exotic. It could be San Marino or uh, Albania, Azerbaijan as well. 
Yeah, so it doesn't have to be Malta, it was just a more no, 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 small it's, country. They, they, uh, they, uh, they are our example. But when we go to Rotterdam, uh, we're going to make an, a special effort to get very uh, much along in the buffet with uh, with Malta. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and maybe Norway. I heard they they send an angel. But, well, uh, he's I, he's I a fallen seen, angel. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it yet, and I think we're going to react to that video later. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, as your neighbors, we have a saying uh, that goes, uh, it's lovely to be in Norwegian in Denmark. Uh, what is your relation to Norway? And uh, have you been here? I have been in Norway, especially Oslo, very many times. My best friend lives in uh, Oslo, in Grønland. Uh, oh. And yeah, hi, Niklas, hi, Celia. <laughs> um, uh, and I, it's uh, so easy to be Danish in in Norway, because my, uh, my experience is that uh, Norwegian people um, love Danish people. I don't, I, I don't know why. Because I, I should just walk into a bar and people, oh, you're from Denmark, blah blah blah. Hey, oh, he bully, who's in Ah, hey, hey, So, so it's it, it's been so easy. Um, yeah, and I think Norwegian people uh, really got under my skin. They have another um, way of going out, but uh, once you get to know it, you really, um, yeah, appreciate it and enjoy it. We are a bit colder than than the Danish, and I think uh, that when we go to Denmark, we just really enjoy it because we are the same kind of people, but you're a little bit more, can I say, soft around the edges, and we relax more in your company than we do here. So... Um, I think uh, I think it's true that we love Danes, and I also think that when we go to Denmark, we meet the same kind of hospitality and friendliness when we when we meet Danes. So, sure, uh, I'm glad to hear that because you you absolutely deserve it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then we can. Uh, I think that Denmark and Norway um, are gossiping about Sweden. So we're together yeah. with, about that, right? <laughs> yeah, because you know. Oh no, no, yeah. you can't say that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. But the thing is, I I have a friend living in Copenhagen, and we every time we get together, we always start dissing the Swedes because we think <laughs> like it's a joke, people. If you're watching, it's a joke. But we yeah. think that they are stupid. You think that they are stupid, and they can't well, understand they us. Global. They can't they understand you. <laughs> You know, yeah, they got, they got, yeah. They, they are the big brother, uh, and they're they're more like the states, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they rule in pop music, and they yeah. have to live with uh, <laughs> others bragging about them. Yeah, yeah, and they don't need neighbors. We can we can back each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, here in Norway, like I said before, I know there are people who love your song and just feel really good when they listen to it. Do you have a greeting to your Norwegian fan base? And feel free to do this in Danish or Norwegian if you want to try that. <laughs> uh, a greeting? Uh, well, yeah. I heard in my very stupid Norwegian voice then. <laughs> that would be lovely. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it. I know you. Hey, this is Jesper Lauritz from Denmark. We hear Furet from... De har lært mig at putte musos på vafler, smager der kort. Trysil, hold med kolden. Nordmann. Ja, Nordmann. Ja, jeg er også en Nordmann. Ja. Ja, vi, ja. Hej, jeg er nødt. Hej, Stefan. 12, 12 point for dig. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. But listen, guys, that's all of our questions for now. We just want to thank you so much for the time to talk with you. And we wish you the very best of luck on your with your preparations for Rotterdam. And we can't wait to see how it goes. Uh, I support you. I know a lot of Norwegians support you. I wish you the very best. Enjoy every minute of this experience. Are you guys going to Rotterdam? Unfortunately, no. We, wow. We're going to be on the digital platform. But maybe when you get there, we'll be able to do another talk for another interview we so would love that we have a lot of time down there see you in the digital platform it's so important to get 12 points from norway right now i, I, I can feel that after this conversation we have to you promised us yes yeah. yes <laughs> I, I i will make sure that norway gives you 12 points yeah because we just lost sweden <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we both did, but we are in their semifinals, so we're the ones who are. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. No, but best of luck, guys. It was so much fun talking with you, and I can't wait to see you again. You too. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you.